Welcome to Major Keys. I'm Shantiana Keys here with Hall of Famer, gold medalist, softball player turned broadcaster, Jessica Mendoza. Thank you so much for joining me today. No, I'm so excited to be here. I know we've talked about this and I am absolutely pumped to be able to join you. Yes, and I would be remiss to not mention that we are also fellow Knight Commission members, which makes me even more excited for this interview. You've accomplished a lot. And at the beginning of every show, each guest, I ask them to take me through their sports journey in 60 seconds. So you've accomplished a lot in your career, <laughs> but I want you to take me all the way to the beginning. Is there like a buzzer where it's like, <laughs> I, I, I'll be soft on the buzzer, but yes, I am keeping the timer. Okay. Um, okay. All right. So I started playing baseball, turned softball, ended up going to Stanford University um, where I played there, loved it there, got my master's and then went to the Olympics, won a gold medal, um, in 2004 in Athens, uh, won a silver medal or like to call white gold 2008 in Beijing, China. And right from there, got asked to join ESPN as a softball commentator, switched over to baseball about six, seven years ago. And so we're covering major league baseball, kind of side doored it as a sideline reporter, and then went into the booth um, and been calling major league baseball games and still college softball for ESPN. So back to the beginning, did you, was it always baseball and softball or did you play other sports? Oh, I played everything. I mean, and that's what I always tell like kids. I have two kids of my own. It's like, do all of it. Um, in fact, basketball was my super passion. Like I wanted in fact, Stanford, Tara Vanderveer. Like I watched them. The reason I wanted to go to Stanford was to be a basketball player. Um, so that that's actually what fueled it. But I played soccer. I was a high jumper um, to, and ran the 200 meter in track and field. Also uh, did everything, tried tennis but I kept trying to hit it over the fence, which didn't really work out too well. Um, but yeah, I was a multi-sport athlete and would have even tried football too, but my dad wouldn't let me. <laughs> so No, that's All awesome. Things. Especially, you know, people are trying to uh, specify sports super early. So that you're a testament to trying everything and, you know, finding what works for you. Sorry, to but sometimes the sport finding you too, because like I, like if I had chosen, so for all these young, you know, athletes that are like, okay, I'm picking my sport at 11 years old, 12 years old, even for me up until like 14, it was basketball. And I would have chosen basketball because I was taller at that. I was five, nine as like a 12 year old, 13 year old. So I was like the tall girl, but then I stopped growing. And I would, and I was a four. So like, I never would have made it. And yet softball was what I continued to play. And I loved it too, but it wasn't the same. And so that's why I say is you might have the sports where you're like, this is mine and I'm going to pick this. Well, sometimes that sport doesn't pick you. So like, it's true. play them all. Well, I'm a former basketball player, so I would have loved to see you play for Tara, but that that's awesome. What lessons did you take from playing sports young um, that you took beyond the field? Definitely the um, balance of humility and confidence, the the ability to have, you know, that that insecurity that, you know, I definitely had of like, am I good enough? What do I need to do to get better? So like, that's what got me in the gym. That's what allowed me to stay after practice to work on hitting the drop ball, like all the things that, you know, you are insecure about and you have that humility because I do think it drives you. I think it's good to have a balance of that where I struggled and then had to learn was the confidence of like, okay, now it's game day. Like you put in the prep, you've had the insecurity, all of that, but now it's game day. You are the best player on this field and absolutely owning who you are and what you've prepared to be. So that to me is that switch and that, that balance. And even in the workplace now, I am constantly like, am I good enough? Here I am one of the only women in major league baseball. And I have that insecurity. I didn't play major league baseball. I get it. Like I don't have that same foundation yet through the sport that I played through my own experiences, I am going to give you something that I think is also unique and really good to listen to, but I have to balance that all the time. And it's not easy, but playing sports is what allowed me to learn that like, it's okay to be humble, but hello, be able to turn on that switch when the light comes on and showcase what you've done. Yeah, I definitely will be taking that away myself. I'm writing that down, taking that with me. <laughs> You're obviously a role model for young girls. Who were those people for you that you looked up to growing up playing sports? Gosh, I mean, obviously, you know, there's there's mom and dad, you know, who's around you. I And then also there was, you know, my dad was was big because he was a coach. He was a football, baseball coach and just constantly drove my sister and I like 
you know, what are you doing to get better? He, you know, we had a weight room before you could eat dinner. He had to lift weights. Like I had friends now the joke were like, I hated going to your house for dinner. Cause your dad always made us lift weights. We weren't even playing sports. I'm like, they had to like do the like cleans and we're talking like serious lifting too. Um, so then that was huge. Cause it set this like, you know, work ethic amongst us. I mean, having a coach as a dad will do that. Um, but then even just like the local varsity athletes, like I remember, you know, going and watching a high school game. And this is what I tell people, your role models don't always have to be the super famous. They can be, but also have someone on the micro, right? Someone that's local that you can go up and touch and see and be around. And I remember Julie Borchard seeing her on the varsity team. I played with her younger sister. She was an awesome shortstop and she got a, ended up getting a full ride scholarship to Wisconsin. And it was the first time I ever knew of a female athlete that was getting their school paid for in college, like never even occurred to me. You hear about these people, but she was like right down the street from me. And so that just opened my eyes to like education and sport and like, wow, like these two can go hand in hand. Like, I don't like this math class, but if I work hard and like push through the stuff I don't want to do and get good grades, I can actually achieve this goal, this bigger goal of being able to get a, a scholarship in college. So that that was a huge role model for me. And then, of course, like Dot Richardson, Lisa Fernandez, two huge softball players in our game. Lisa being Hispanic, um, you know, Fernandez was huge for me as a Mendoza, like seeing that. Um, she was like, you know, way up here, the goat. Right. But being able to see a kick ass female athlete with a last name of Fernandez was huge. Absolutely. And obviously, you know, you're the, on the macro level for a lot of young girls. You've been the first to break through a lot of barriers, a few of those being first female analyst for an ESPN MLB game on TV, the first female analyst for a nationally televised MLB postseason game, first female analyst for a men's college World Series telecast. And since that wasn't enough, you were part of the first female duo to call an MLB game for ESPN. As someone who's already been a pioneer already in their career, what other first would you like to see in sports? Uh, you know, on the field, you know, and, and when I say on the field, I mean all of it. So I want to, you know, if, if you take baseball in itself, you know, I would love to see there are women playing baseball, but see that continue to push where we start to see more women, you know, even in the minor leagues and the professional realms. But most importantly than the ownership in the front office. Kim Ng, you know, this last year, the first general manager in all of Major League Baseball for the Miami Marlins. Um, Rachel Balkovic just two weeks ago was announced as the first ever manager. She'll be in the Yankees organization at the, the low A single A um, for the Yankees managing an, a team. Um, so to be able to see more of the decision makers as women, uh, is something that I think needs to happen across all men's professional sports, but especially those that are hiring and making these bigger ultimate decisions. That was actually my next question because I had Rachel on the show uh, a couple months ago, actually. Of course um, you did. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> as you mentioned, she's been recently promoted. How impactful and important is that hire? Yeah, I think it, it's going to be more impactful as we see her on the field. Because I think it's great. We see this all the time, you know, the big news press release, all the media attention that comes from that. I'm excited to see her do her thing. Um, in fact, this is something that working in, with ESPN that I want to follow her with some cameras. Like I want there not to just be this announcement that comes through on your Twitter feed or whatever, but I want girls, women, boys, men, everyone to see her because she's really good. <laughs> so like to actually see what is a manager at that level, because when it's Rachel, she's fluent in Spanish. She's getting down with the Latin guys and talking to them and working on their hitting. She just came as a hitting coordinator. So, I mean, that's her background, yet her eye training, she did, she lived in the Netherlands for years to be able to understand the importance of like hand-eye coordination and how to train your eyes to better see and visualize there's so much in her background. In fact, I think she's overqualified for the job, but I think it's important for people to see and not just read the headline, but actually understand what does that really mean? Same with Kim Ng, you know, everyone, all these first, I want people to really see Kim Ng in action, to see how great she really is. No, oh, I'm excited as well to see her on the field, but yeah, I hope you get to follow her around with some cameras. So I'd, I'd love to see that as well. Uh, we're going to change gears a little bit. I do a segment called It's a Vibe. All right. So what is something that you are really enjoying right now that you would say it's a vibe? Uh, 
traveling. <laughs> I know, okay. you know, COVID it's like, it seems like it's here to stay. It's been hard. And I, I've just finally been like, okay, you know, I'm vaccinated. My family's vaccinated. We just got back from Montana last night. We did Yellowstone in the winter and the geysers and um, we're trying to plan a trip to Spain here. I, I don't know. I, I, I really like right now, my big thing, and this is my off season. So, you know, baseball's around the corner. So being able to get out there again, culturally, um, my family originally is, you know, from Mexico, but originally too from Spain and I've never been. So like, there's places I want to show my kids experience with my children. Uh, we live up here in Oregon. So we, we have a, a trailer. We're actually parking at a mountain this weekend. We're for the first time going to literally wow. spend the night in our trailer in the snow. Um, but right at the base of a mountain, get out and go ski and just do some adventures. Um, so that's kind of my vibe right now, especially because it's off work time. So to me, it's all family time and like adventure time. Yeah, I can't exactly relate. It snowed here in Georgia and it might not even been, you know, an inch. So I'm sure uh, your experience yesterday was a little different than mine, but uh, <laughs> I have some rapid fire questions for you. So obviously, you know, answer them quickly, but they, they range across the board. All right, are you ready? Yes. <laughs> okay, what is your favorite women's sports moment of all time? Uh, Billie Jean King, Bobby Riggs, Battle of Sexes. What was your best asset as a basketball player? Ooh, my hops <laughs> for sure. And boxing out. Can I have two? Cause like I yeah. got under the basket, like I threw blows. I wasn't the tallest. So like, I was a very similar basketball player, five, eight, stopped growing in eighth grade, but I was a post player. Yeah. Who thought Honestly, of that? Well, and I know these are just quick, but like, seriously, like really tall women, especially in high school under the basket, like they weren't aggressive. Yeah. They're used to just their whole life. They just stand there like giraffes and get the yeah. ball. And so I just like, you can throw some blows and get in there and like shove them around. And like, that's how oh, you yeah. battle. <laughs> oh no, I completely understand. That's how I made a living. Uh, what is your dream sporting event to attend? Um, probably, um, cause I've knocked two of them off the masters and Wimbledon. Um, gosh, so now I, I would say I, I, maybe the Kentucky Derby, just cause like, it's another big one that I've always, even though I'm not into horse racing at all, but like, <laughs> I want to check off like all the big ones. Right. Okay. That's the first for, for rapid fire on the show, uh, dream sporting event to cover and you covered at every level. So I, I'm curious to know what this answer is. Uh, um, er. <laughs> I'm not good at these. Um, you know, I don't know, I, I guess maybe Super Bowl. like okay. why not? Yeah. Like to be able, I mean, not as an analyst, but to be able to cover it would be, would be really cool. I come from a football family, so I know they would appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> Celebrity dead or alive that you'd like to attend a game with. Oh man. Ooh. Okay. Um, hmm. attend a game, babe Diedrichson. Um, I don't know if you know who she is, but yeah. She was like the first female athlete that like did, she like was an Olympic, like she was a golfer. She like did track and field. She did everything. This is like 1920s, 1930s. Okay. And I would just love to pick her brain because she was like superstar athlete way ahead before women were allowed to be athletes. And she was just so good that they couldn't stop her. And I just, I don't know, I'd kind of like to bring her to now and yeah. Like, let's go watch the WNBA game. Let's go watch and just have her be like, oh, this right. is so yeah. cool. Because she was one of the first. That would be awesome. Who is the softball goat in your opinion? Softball goat? Goat, yep. Oh, Lisa Fernandez. Okay. Out of doubt. <laughs> yeah, she's ridiculous. Who is your, so or excuse me, your baseball goat? I, I include like the person, I guess, into that one. Um, and maybe because he recently passed. So he's just on the heart, but Hank Aaron, everything that he went through to accomplish his career and then being able to spend some time with him um, before he passed, um, just listening to his stories, his background, like come from Alabama and like just no money, nothing like, and then everything he accomplished, he didn't even have shoes when he left to go play professional baseball. Like oh, wow. just wrap your mind around that. Yeah. And he was the greatest home run hitter, you know, breaking Babe Ruth until Barry Bonds broke his, but it, it's incredible what that man did. 
Yeah, well, we're big fans here in Atlanta. What's yeah. your favorite sports achievement? A uh, gold medal, without a doubt. Gold it's cliche, medal. but oh my God, is it freaking cool. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think you did pretty well. I did skip over a question that I promised I would ask um, a friend of mine from college. She was on the softball team and she's a big fan of yours. Um, she, her name is Marissa Boyette. She was a pitcher on the college softball team. Um, and now she coaches young girls. She says, yes, I love her. <laughs> she Seriously. Asked, what have you seen specifically in softball that has made it grow exponentially as a TV sport compared to baseball and other non-football basketball sports? Speed of the game, speed of the game and the emotion of the players. Like those two things hand in hand, the, the game is so much quicker. Softball is like, let's go like catch the ball. Here it comes. Like, and there's just so much action. Baseball is slow, you know, like look over to first, get the sign, step off. Like, oh my gosh, just pitch the freaking ball. Softball is just, it's, it's by nature, it's smaller. So everything's like more compact. It's quick. Like you don't have time. Like everything is like, let's go. It takes yeah. you 2.5 seconds to get rid of the ball to get someone out at first base. So I, I love that to me, it's like high excitement. It's only seven innings. So like, let's go. It's better. <laughs> it's better. That's awesome. Well, I'm sure she'll appreciate that answer. The show is called major keys. And so at the end of every show, I ask, what is one major key or piece of advice that you would give to those who are watching? To, to stand out, you have to find what makes you different. I think there is a pressure out there um, to fit in, right? To look and act and be like what you see on social media, or you see on television, you see sometimes amongst your friends. And yet, like to be successful, you need to separate yourself. And so my biggest advice, that key, the major key is to find what makes you unique, what makes you different, what fires you up, what gets you going and set yourself apart from your peers. It's okay to be different. We try so hard to blend. And I really believe if you can find within yourself what actually sets you apart from everyone else around you. And by the way, your real people, your real friends will love that about you. If they walk away and say, mm -mm, you're different, that's just out there, they weren't your people. So find that, raise it from the rooftops. And that to me is what allows you to get to that next level and ultimately just stand out amongst everyone else. I love that. Like I said, I'm taking notes myself and, and taking, <laughs> taking, taking your advice to heart. I love your passion. Uh, but thank you so much for joining me. I look forward to continuing to work with you on the Night Commission, of course, um, and finally meeting you in person. I know. I can't wait for our meeting in person because I missed the last one. And so I can't wait to actually hang out and not just be on a visual screen. I